Welcome back to another episode of the Holocore. In today's artifact file, we'll look at the history of the twin blades of the Deceiver. Let us begin. The story of these weapons start with a Sindori named Veridus. Veridus was among the original Blood Elves sent by Crown Prince Kael'thas Sunstrider to train with Lord Illidan Stormrage as his first demon hunters. Out of the five Blood Elves sent by Kael'thas, Veridus was the only one to survive Illidan's training. The process to become a demon hunter was grueling, dangerous, and torturous, resulting in a very narrow success rate for the countless trainees. Despite the pain and horrors Veridus faced, his will persisted. Some say he offered up his eyesight with a smile, while others claim he didn't even flinch at the pain. Veridus appeared to be one of Illidan's most powerful students, his heart and soul dedicated to eradicating the Burning Legion. Unlike most practice disciplines, the Illidari didn't have the luxury of studying their tactics and magics within libraries and vast archives. Trainees were paired with experienced demon hunters and sent on dangerous missions, and those who learned quick and adapted well survived. Veridus rose through the ranks quickly, and within a year of his training, he found himself accompanying fresh recruits as their instructor. Eventually, Veridus was tasked with an important mission by Lord Illidan himself. Veridus ventured forth to investigate a hidden complex that housed members of the Shadow Council. Within their domain, Veridus discovered a book called The Book of Fell Names, a tome that radiated demonic magic. Within its pages was information on the nature of demons, and their habits, weaknesses, and tactics in battle. A priceless reservoir for any who waged war against the Burning Legion. Veridus soon learned that the tome was enchanted to prevent it from being removed from its domain, forcing the demon hunter to improvise. Veridus absorbed as much of the book's power as he could before returning to the Black Temple, leaving the book behind within the Shadow Council's domain. With the book's contents giving him new, heightened powers, Veridus became an instrument of vengeance against the Legion. Veridus' newfound knowledge would carry him to glory and infamy among his fellow demon hunters, and even earned him praise with Illidan Stormrage himself. Unbeknownst to Veridus, the book's power had not been absorbed into him, but rather had simply established a link between the Demon Hunter and the Felto. When the Burning Legion brought its war to Outland, Illidan rallied his Demon Hunters. As the Alliance and Horde didn't truly understand Illidan's plan and believed him to be an ally of the Legion, they turned their attention towards the Black Temple. During their campaign, the Alliance and Horde heroes were able to secure the Book of Fell Names and destroy the enchantments that held it in place. As Veridus moved to intercept the forces that laid siege to the Black Temple, he found himself face to face with the heroes that possessed the book. To his surprise, as the heroes began to rip pages out one by one, Veridus found his borrowed power evaporate. Despite his weakness, Veridus fought the temple's invaders, before eventually falling to their onslaught. As is the fate with many demon hunters, Veridus' soul did not succumb to the oblivion of death. Instead, he was whisked away to the Twisting Nether where he was set upon by Kil'jaeden. Although the Eridor Lord tortured the Demon Hunter, Kil'jaeden's true end goal lay in the words he whispered to the fallen Blood Elf. The Deceiver lived up to his name well with Veritas' torture, and asked who had informed his killers of the Feltom's secrets. Surely it had not been the Legion or the Shadow Council, but they would want the Book of Fell names intact and in their possession. It was the Illidari. Kil'jaeden whispered. Only they knew your power. They betrayed you. The Deceiver's words poisoned the Demon Hunter's mind, and in time, Veritas would come to believe them. Kil'jaeden's whispers of doubt and betrayal turned to whispers of power, promising him that the secrets he had borrowed from the Book of Fell Names was merely a fraction of what the Legion offered. Veridus willingly accepted. Kil'jaeden turned to his fellow Eridar, and with their help, they performed an agonizing ritual that infused a small portion of Kil'jaeden's soul into the Demon Hunter, warping and twisting him into a fully-fledged demon. During the ritual, a portion of Kil'jaeden's power had also been infused into Veridus' weapons, 
making the Warglaives even deadlier in Veritas' hands. Empowered by Kil'jaeden, Veritas became an instrument of slaughter for the Legion. From world to world, city to city, Veritas was sent to butcher the innocent who fought against the Legion. Veritas' favorite targets were Illidari's survivors, as Kil'jaeden's words echoed in his mind. When the Burning Legion broke into the Vault of the Wardens, Veritas descended upon the fleeing Illidari prisoners, picking them off one by one. This choice would eventually prove to be his downfall as the Illidari regrouped and sent one of their strongest to intercept and eventually slay the traitorous Demon Hunter. Although Veritas' Warglaives were claimed by the Illidari, Kil'jaeden's power still lurks in these monstrous weapons. It seems only fitting that the Eridar Lord's power be turned back against him, and be used to slaughter the endless armies at his command.